The Kelly Cup playoffs have started. We'll update all the series. A team debuting in October now has a name and a logo. And individual award winners for this season have been named. It's great to have you here because ECHL week starts now. Hi, welcome to ECHL Week. I'm Barry Schickling. With the ECHL's regular season complete, the league took off for one day before starting the Kelly Cup playoffs. So let's get started by looking at the Western Conference semifinal series. First, regular season conference champ Allen versus Utah. The Americans, making their first Kelly Cup playoff appearance since 2018, opted to play the first two games of their series at home. That decision paid off in Game 1 as Spencer Osichuk, Brett Newman, and Colby McCauley were the goal scorers for the Americans. In Game 2, both Newman and Asichuk struck again. Plus, Matt Register and Scott Conway found the back of the net as the Americans looked very much like the top-seeded team in a 4-2 victory. Allen's veteran goaltending tandem of Jake Patterson and C.J. Mott, who split the first two games, has Allen well positioned for a lengthy postseason run. In the other Western series, Wichita is playing its home games at the Wichita Ice Center because its regular rink is unavailable. Home ice didn't help the Thunder as Anthony Nellis scored his second goal of the game with just 25 seconds left to give Fort Wayne a 3-2 victory in the opener. Power plays were the difference in Game 2, as the Thunder struck three times with a man advantage. That was the difference in a 5-2 victory over the Comets. Anthony Beauregard, Noel Huffenmeyer, and Jeremy McKenna all contributed a goal and an assist in Wichita's win, as a rabid crowd of about a thousand cheered them on. A reminder, all Kelly Cup playoff matchups this year are best of five game series. Over in the East, two teams which haven't seen the postseason in a while are doing battle. Greenville, which last qualified for the postseason in 2017, is going up against Indy in the playoffs for just the second time. And the first game of the series belonged to the Swamp Rabbits and goaltender Ryan Bednard, who made 37 saves to record his first career ECHL postseason shutout. Florida and South Carolina last faced each other in the playoffs in 2017, but it's the seventh time they've crossed paths in the postseason. The Stingrays also have building issues, which has forced their home playoff games to the Carolina Ice Palace. Dan DeSalvo's overtime goal gave South Carolina a Game 1 victory. Game 2 had very little similarity to the first. The Everblades scored twice in the first period and three more times in the second, five different players got the goals, and carried a 5-0 lead into the third. But South Carolina rallied. Four goals in the span of nine minutes in the first half of the period narrowed the margin to one. However, Florida and all ECHL first team goaltender Jake Hildebrand withstood the Stingrays late push and the teams head to southwest Florida to decide the series in what's now a best of three this weekend. With the regular season in the rearview mirror, there's one more team award worth mentioning and it was clinched last week. Florida earned the Brabham Cup for having the ECHL's best regular season record. As a result, the Blades are also guaranteed home ice advantage throughout their participation in the playoffs. It's the fourth time Florida has won the cup, named in recognition of one of the league's co-founders, the late Henry Brabham. The new team in Trois-Rivières, the ECHL's first member in Quebec province, will be known as the Lions. The reveal took place on Thursday. The logo includes a stylized fleur-de-lis, which is used to form the face of a carnivorous feline. The Lions will open the ECHL's 21-22 season on October 21st in a game against the Newfoundland Growlers. Both teams are owned by Deacon Sports and Entertainment. We'll have more details about the Lions in next week's show. Stories about head coaches lead off our news from all around the ECHL. Veteran head coach Rob Murray will return to Tulsa next season. Murray has signed a two-year contract extension which will keep him with the Oilers through the 22-23 campaign. Murray has spent the last four years as the Oilers head coach. Under his guidance, the team won the Mountain Division Championship during the 2018-19 season. That year, the Oilers came within one victory of reaching the Kelly Cup Finals. As Director of Hockey Operations, Murray also won the ECHL's General Manager of the Year honor in 2019. Tulsa did not qualify for the postseason this year. 
Derek Army, who took over as interim head coach of the Wheeling Nailers in April, has had the temporary portion of his title removed. As a result, Army's become the 20th head coach of Wheeling's ECHL team, dating to 1992. Army's first pro team as a player was the Nailers in 2014, and he was part of the team's run to the Kelly Cup Finals two seasons later. Army was the team's captain in his final two years in Nail City, both of which included time in the American Hockey League. This season was a great learning experience for me, as it helps to set the foundation for the future, Army said. I am excited for the challenges to come as we look to compete for a Kelly Cup while developing exciting young talent for the Pittsburgh Penguins organization. The last weekend of the regular season provided two memorable games at the same location, one for a Fort Wayne Combat and one for a Utah Grizzly. Fort Wayne's Zach Pachiro became the fifth player this season to score five points in one game. During a 9-1 victory at Utah, Pachiro scored twice and added three assists. It was the second five-point game of his ECHL career. He also had two goals and three assists in October of 2017 while a member of the Allen Americans. The next night, also at Maverick Center, Charlie Girard became the fourth ECHL player to record four goals in a game this season. The decision was reversed this time as the Grizzlies earned a 6-0 victory over Fort Wayne. Girard's effort lifted him to 20 goals in just 49 games in the ECHL during his rookie pro season. The individual award winners for the season are straight ahead on ECHL Week. New buyers can benefit by working with a trusted real estate agent. Will Springer is your trusted advisor for buyers and sellers. For a free consultation or to find an agent in your area of the country, contact Will today. With the end of the regular season comes the naming of the individual award winners. These seven men have been recognized for their achievements this season. The ECHL's 2021 Most Valuable Player is Anthony Beauregard of Wichita. Beauregard was number two in scoring in the ECHL despite playing at just 62 of his team's 71 games. He topped the league with 49 assists, tied for third in plus-minus, and had the longest scoring streak in the ECHL this season, 13 games. He also is one of just five players to record five points in a game. He's the first Wichita player to be honored with this award. Florida's Jake Hildebrand has been named Goaltender of the Year. The fifth-year pro tied for the league lead in victories was second in total saves, third in save percentage, and fourth in goals against average. The member of the 2016 Kelly Cup champion Allen Americans was also named the All-ECHL First Team last week. Les Lancaster of Allen is the ECHL's Defenseman of the Year. In his second season with the Americans, he led all blue liners in points and finished fifth overall in scoring. Lancaster paced all rear guards in goals and points and was tied for top spot in power play points as well as finishing third in power play assists. He was the only Allen player to appear in all 72 of the team's games. Bruce Ramsey of Wichita is the recipient of the Coach of the Year Award. He led the Thunder to a second place finish in the Western Conference during the regular season. It marked Wichita's first 40-plus win season in its time in the ECHL, which dates to 2014. Also, the Thunder was 22-10-4 on the road, leading the league in wins away from home. Ramsey's in his second season as the Thunder's bench boss. He previously had coached the Tulsa Oilers. Ramsey was also honored with the General Manager of the Year Award, which was determined by a vote of ECHL coaches. Matthew Boucher of the Utah Grizzlies has been named as the Rookie of the Year and recipient of the John A. Daly Memorial Trophy. Boucher, who was named to the ECHL All-Rookie Team last week, led all first-year players with 25 goals and 52 points. He was tied for second with four power play goals and tied for fifth with 11 power play points. Orlando's Aaron Luchuk earned the ECHL Scoring Championship. He had 74 points, three ahead of Wichita's Anthony Beauregard, who had led the league for much of the season. Luchuk, an all-league first team member and the ECHL Sportsmanship Award winner, finished third in both goals and assists. He's averaged nearly a point a game in his three-year ECHL career. 
And Florida forward John McCarron is the plus performer of the year. He ended the season with a plus 29 rating. It's the fourth straight year a different member of the Everblades has won the award. McCarron, a member of the All-ECHL First Team, was even or better in 52 of his 68 games this season. He also led the league with 31 goals. Unless noted, awards are decided in a vote of ECHL coaches, broadcasters, media relations directors, and media members. We wrap up the regular year with a few teams that won't be taking part in the postseason, but for highlights purposes, they're still part of the best of the week. We recognize some awesome assists, starting with Eric Bradford of Jacksonville, who spies Aaron Azarian cutting to the net during this victory over Orlando. It doesn't get much more pinpoint than this. Giorgio Estefan of Kansas City could shoot from the slot, but instead he sends a pass backward to teammate Brody Reed, and it results in a score for the Mavericks in a win against Wichita. Michael Jolie had 18 goals in just 43 games this season, but here the Orlando forward shows he can get the puck to his teammates too. Tristan Langan puts this one home to tie the game, which the Solar Bears eventually won in Jacksonville. And Brendan Miller of Wheeling rips the one-timer into the net, but he owes it all to a right-on-the-stick pass from Tim Doherty during Wheeling's season-ending victory over Indy. We sure look forward to hearing that goal horn and wheeling again once the fall rolls around. That wraps up another edition of ECHL Week. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media channels. It's the best way to stay up to date on everything that's going on throughout the Kelly Cup playoffs. See you next time.